If you own a diesel vehicle, there's a good chance you're unknowingly making a critical operating mistake that's shortening your engine's lifespan, reducing thermal efficiency, and increasing long-term fuel consumption. Many diesel owners, especially those new to the platform, misuse engine load and RPM balance. Today, we'll uncover the engineering truth behind optimal diesel RPM usage and why ignoring it can lead to excessive cylinder pressure, premature turbo wear, and even bottom-end bearing failure. Stay tuned, because at the end, I'll give you the ideal RPM range for city driving, highway cruising, and towing, plus a monitoring method using your torque curve that can catch early signs of mechanical stress. Let's begin by debunking the most widespread myth in diesel driving. The belief that operating at the lowest RPM possible always preserves fuel and minimizes engine wear is only partially true. Under constant light load and flat terrain, that strategy can be efficient. But under moderate to heavy load, lugging the engine at low RPM leads to high cylinder pressures, incomplete combustion, excessive soot, and oil dilution. This practice quietly accelerates internal wear, and over time, it compromises your injectors, EGR system, and even the crankshaft bearings. Here's a common mistake many diesel drivers make. Cruising at highway speeds in top gear, keeping the tachometer locked between 1,200 and 1,500 RPM. On the surface, it seems like a smart move. Low revs mean less fuel, right? But in reality, this driving habit promotes conditions that accelerate carbon accumulation, reduce turbocharger efficiency, and increase long-term engine wear. This becomes particularly harmful when the engine is under load while operating in that low RPM range. To understand why, we need to break down how diesel combustion fundamentally works. Unlike gasoline engines that use spark ignition, diesels operate on compression ignition. Diesel fuel has a slower burn rate compared to gasoline, and that combustion behavior is optimized when the engine is running around 1,800 RPM. At this RPM, the pressure, temperature, and time available in the cylinder allow the fuel to burn more completely, delivering peak thermal efficiency. Of course, the ideal RPM window varies depending on the engine's displacement, turbo characteristics, and tuning, but consistently operating below that threshold, especially under load, prevents full combustion. The result? Incomplete burn cycles that leave behind unburned hydrocarbons and carbon particulates. Over time, this leads to internal carbon fouling. That soot builds up on the piston crowns, injector tips, valve seats, and cylinder liners. Engines without effective self-cleaning mechanisms, such as active DPF regeneration or variable geometry turbos, are even more susceptible, especially when they spend significant time idling or being lugged at low RPM under strain. Carbon buildup inside a diesel engine functions like an insulator, creating localized hotspots within the combustion chamber. These high temperature zones disrupt the combustion balance, causing uneven flame propagation, elevated cylinder pressures, and, over time, mechanical failures such as piston crown cracking and cylinder head warping. This kind of damage typically occurs after prolonged neglect and poor operating habits. If your diesel is equipped with a turbocharger, and nearly all modern diesels are, low RPM driving introduces another critical issue, turbo inefficiency. 
Turbochargers rely on exhaust gas volume and velocity to generate boost. At low RPMs, exhaust energy is insufficient to spool the turbine effectively. So when you suddenly demand power during uphill climbs or highway merging, the lagging turbo can't respond quickly. The result? Sluggish acceleration in elevated exhaust gas temperatures due to delayed boost response and poor air fuel mixing. This high load, low RPM scenario creates sustained thermal stress on turbo components. Repeating this cycle frequently leads to oil coking, bearing degradation and premature turbo failure. One key variable that many diesel owners overlook is exhaust gas temperature, EGT. Under load at low RPMs, EGT can rise rapidly, often exceeding 1,400 degrees. These extreme conditions are destructive. Excess heat can oxidize engine oil, degrade injector tips, and distort cylinder head geometry. Professional diesel technicians routinely cite high EGT under low RPM as a leading contributor to accelerated engine wear and failure. Based on data from dyno testing and manufacturer specs, most diesel engines reach peak combustion efficiency between 1,800 and 3,000 RPM. This range allows optimal timing between fuel injection and piston position, resulting in complete combustion and efficient turbo operation. However, heavy-duty or long-stroke diesels may have a narrower band, typically 1,600 to 1,200 RPM, where they perform best. Always refer to your vehicle's torque curve and OEM specifications. At around 1,800 RPM, the combustion cycle aligns well with piston travel, ensuring a full burn cycle. This means less soot production, more efficient fuel usage, and stabilized EGT. The turbocharger is also operating within its design envelope, delivering adequate airflow. For highway use, cruising at 2,000 to 2,500 RPM is generally ideal, depending on your gearing and final drive ratio. For city driving, maintaining engine speed above 1,800 RPM ensures cleaner operation and better throttle response. When towing or climbing gradients, allowing the engine to rev up to 2,500 or even 3,000 RPM is both acceptable and recommended. Engines are engineered to handle this kind of demand. Instead of defaulting to the highest possible gear, you should select a gear that keeps the engine in its torque band. This applies to both manual transmissions and automatic diesels with manual shift modes. Avoiding low RPM lugging is essential, even if eco modes suggest otherwise. For example, cruising at 65 Mofusar in sixth gear at 1,400 RPM may sound efficient, but you're sacrificing combustion quality and turbo response. Downshifting to fifth and running at 2,200 RPM may sound louder, but it promotes optimal cylinder pressure, proper turbo spool, and safer EGT levels. That extra engine sound is a sign of healthy operation, not mechanical abuse. Compare that to the silence of a failing turbo or a damaged piston ring, and the choice becomes obvious. Now, does running higher RPMs kill your fuel economy? Not necessarily. While instantaneous fuel consumption per minute might increase, overall thermal efficiency improves because combustion is more complete. This means less wasted fuel, fewer unburned hydrocarbons, and reduced carbon fouling. In contrast, low RPM combustion is inefficient and produces soot, heat, 
and long-term damage. One final but vital recommendation. After a cold start, especially in winter conditions, idle your diesel for 30 to 60 seconds. Then drive gently. Don't immediately jump to 20,500 RPM. Let oil pressure stabilize and coolant temperature begin to rise before applying load. Gradual warm-up protects piston rings, cylinder walls, and turbo bearings from thermal shock. Your diesel engine isn't built to coast at low idle speeds. It's built for sustained, efficient work within its torque band. Operating between 1,800 and 3,000 RPM under load isn't aggressive. It's proper diesel usage. Just remember, redline RPMs are for high demand situations only, not continuous driving. So stop underutilizing your diesel engine. Begin using it the way it was engineered. Stay in the power band, protect your components, and you'll see reduced maintenance costs and better performance across the board. It's not about making the engine work harder. It's about making it work correctly. And in diesel applications, that means smart RPM management, complete combustion, controlled heat, and maximized efficiency. Next time you're behind the wheel, watch that tatch. Keep it above 1,800 RPM. Aim for 2,000 to 2,500 RPM when cruising. And don't hesitate to rev higher when the load demands it. Your engine will repay you with longevity, power, and reliability. Thanks for watching. If this helped you understand your diesel better, don't forget to like and subscribe for more in-depth automotive breakdowns.